Hi lads, uh, we're going to create a desktop fan um, that's made of three parts. We have the main body, we have this propeller, and we have this base here. Okay, so starting off in SolidWorks, <clears throat> I'm going to create a sketch on the, uh, let's see, we will go on the, we will go on the front plane. We look normal to it, and we'll start off with a sketch of a center line. Um, and we're going to put the origin over towards the right hand side of the center line. Mention the center line to be 150. And we're going to go with a spline. And I'm going to start the one end of the spline in, then <coughs> in line with the left hand end of the center line. I want a three point spline. I'm going to land my second point here, and my third point has to be in line with the other end of the center line there. I'm going to put some dimensions on it. <coughs> First of all, I want to lock this point and this point locked. Uh, sorry, together vertically, and this point and this point here locked together vertically. We want a 20 millimeter, 20 millimeter dimension from that point to that point. 50 millimeter from here to here. I'll try that again. <coughs> we want a vertical measurement of 60 for this point. And we'll use the origin as a as a reference, and we want a horizontal measurement to the uh, the origin as well as at thirty. And we can see now that it's fully defined. <coughs> so I'm going to take this, and I'm going to surface revolve it using the center line as my axis of rotation, which it automatically picks up, three hundred and sixty degrees. I will then thicken that surface inwards uh, 1.5 millimeters. <clears throat> now, the next thing I'll do uh, will be to start uh, the creation of the what I would call, <coughs> excuse me, the um, the the kind of the shaft. Uh, the central column that the propeller will sit on and that's going to be on a new plane which is based on the right plane but it will be 20 millimeters back <coughs> so we flip the offset and bring it to 20 and that's where the plane is going to be there on that plane I'm going to sketch a circle from the origin which is the center diameter 20 Um, and what I will do then <coughs> is I will extrude it mid plane so it's going to go in two directions sorry I just have a separate window open here <coughs> try that again mid plane 20 millimeters and we will not merge the results well we can't really because nothing is attached here from the two bodies Grand. I will hide that plane <coughs> now I'm going to go to hidden detail visible or hidden lines visible and what I'm going to do is draw a rectangle on this little face in here okay so I'm going to select the front plane sketch I'm going to start with a center line right down the middle so I'm going to lo locate the midpoint of that line to the midpoint of that line and I will go to center rectangle in the middle of that center line <clears throat> and I'm going to lock it on here make sure it's locked on to the edge of the extrusion and I want to make that distance there too <clears throat> so it's fully defined I'm going to end my sketch and what I'll do is I'll go back to my no I'm going to leave it a hidden line visible I'm going to do an extrude of that there up to a body up to the body and the body that I'm going to choose is that there the inside of that <coughs> uh, up to body so we can see that it's going to meet it at a curve and um, the next thing I'll do is a circular pattern by the way I've merged the result there I think I'll just double check that and you should be renaming all these features as we go along. 
<coughs> the next thing I'll do is a circular pattern. I want three basic um, kind of spindles, if you want to call it that. So first of all, I need to set myself up an axis that I can do my revolution or revolve around. Uh, sorry, my circular pattern around. So I'll go to reference geometry and features and axis. And the object I want to put the axis on is this cylinder here. There's my preview. Green tick. So now I have an axis in place. <clears throat> I will now go circular pattern. The axis is chosen first. I want three of them through 360 degrees. And the feature I want a linear pattern is that there. <clears throat> so I haven't selected that properly. So I'm going to click that, pick that box there. And I'm going to clear that selection. It's not picking it up too well. Okay, I'm going to try this again. Sorry. This should be the axis. There we go. Features and faces. Um, maybe I will go to I'll go, it's not really working here for me so I'm going to go with bodies I'm going to clear that sorry let me try that again <coughs> circular pattern select my axis 3 equal spacing 360 degrees And so it's it's not letting me do this. I reckon the reason it's not letting me do this is because of the merge result. So I'm gonna go back, unmerge the result for now. <coughs> Linear pattern, circular pattern. Try that again. Axis. We want three of them. And we want um, yeah, I think that's that's fine there. I'm going to untick geometry pattern as well. Uh, let's see if this works. Only merging features may be patterned. Okay, so I have a problem here. So I don't understand why this is not working. <coughs> I'm going to go with bodies instead. Let's see if that works. And for some reason that worked there <coughs> so we had this problem in class one or two people had problems um, although when I was doing it in class I didn't have this problem so however I sorted it there <coughs> what I'll do is a combine insert features combine the three blades and the central piece like so so in my solid bodies folder I should have the outer body and the, the three blades Okay, after all that, next thing I will do is a cut extrude on that face there. I'm going to sketch a circle. Find the center. It's at the origin. Diameter 3, is, I think it is. And I'm going to extrude cut that. But the extrude cut that I'm going to do is going to be up to this up to next so what it'll do is it'll cut it up to the next surface it meets which is that one there rather than through all because i'm going to have something at the back here at the end so if i go through all whatever i do uh, later on it's going to cut through that which i don't want so it's up to next grant now i'm going to set up two planes that we're going to do the wings on so plane one is going to be based on the the front plane and I just need to check my dimensions here in my separate drawing if you can just bear with me for a second so plane the first plane is going to be 30 millimeters from the front plane and the second plane is going to be 120 millimeters so 30 and 120 so reference geometry plane <coughs> try that again plane front plane 30 millimeters that's my first plane I'll go to the front plane again and do another plane 120 millimeters from that like so so I'm going to draw two profiles on those planes and we're going to be doing uh, a loft between them <coughs> okay so on the, my other screen I'm just going to prepare the the loft the two sketches for the loft Okay, so plane 3, select it, look normal to it, 
and let's get a center line running down the middle from the origin keep it horizontal I'm going to go with a three point spline first point there, second point there, third point there and we're going to put some dimensions on this so the spline handles I'm going to adjust them so I want that to be vertical because we're going to be doing a mirror later on this one I want to be vertical <coughs> and this one here I'll make horizontal looks a bit weird at the moment I want a 42 millimeter distance from there to there <coughs> um, let's see I want a 25 millimeter between the start point and the end point of the spline 25 um, now the spline handle let's see now uh, so this point here this third point I'm going to make that eight millimeters horizontally from there and vertically to that same point I'm going to make it four it's looking a bit weird now but just bear with me <coughs> the triangle here I'm going to put a, a measurement on that on the triangle I'm going to make that ten the same with the other one here I'm going to make that uh, ten the triangle <coughs> um, this spline handle here now this now I have to go to my other drawing for a second just to check what uh, what measurement I have on it roughly uh, 37 okay let me try that again we make it 40 in fact okay it's fully defined so I'm going to exit that sketch <coughs> and I'm going to do a separate ske a second sketch on this one here so I'll look normal to it again new sketch center line down should same again like the first one down the middle and what I'm going to do is go to my I'm going to go to my other drawing there and I'm just going to edit the sketch okay uh, same again we're going to go to three points spline. it's going to be bigger though <coughs> start on the center line three points spline handles vertical shouldn't have done that horizontal sorry vertical this one here at the top horizontal <coughs> now spline the triangles of the spline handle have to be set to 20 in length um, the top one here is going to be set to 70 the distance is 56 between the start and end of the spline horizontally there's going to be a 32 mil distance from the origin to the end point of the spline And what else do we need? Uh, the third spline point is going to be 14 millimeters vertically up from the origin. And horizontally, it will have a distance of 15. <coughs> and now it is fully defined. So I'll end my sketch. So, what I'll do now is a loft. I'm going to hide both my planes, I don't need them anymore. What I'll do is a loft, a surface loft. In fact, I'll do a boundary surface, which is probably easier to do because I have no guide curves from one to the other, like so. I'm going to make a mistake on purpose here, boundary surface. So if I click the left-hand side of that profile and the right-hand side of that profile, it does a crisscross effect here, which is not good. So what we have to do is select the left-hand side to the left-hand side. We'll do it again, boundary surface, left-hand side of one <coughs> to the left-hand side of the other. Uh, green tick so that's a straight we don't need we don't need guide curves and stuff like that um, the boundary surface usually suffices I will then do a mirror about the top plane 
of this, I'm going to choose bodies of this body here. <coughs> Next thing I'll do is a trim. I'm going to trim off that excess bit on the inside. It's not needed. And I'm going to use that surface as my trim tool. So because that's a surface, we can do, do trim surface. So our trim tool is going to be the outside of that. <coughs> and the area we want to, or the objects we want to remove are those two there. Green tick. So what I have is a perfectly molded wing to the curved out, uh, surface there, the outside. I'm going to hide this for the moment. So we have to fill in um, a couple of bits there. So here I'm going to use a filled surface, which is a very basic uh, uh, kind of, it's not a loft. Uh, it's a way of filling basically a gap between two surfaces. So I click the top edge, bottom edge. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let it do its thing there for a second. Make sure neither of them say sketch. If they say sketch, you need to hide the sketch. We don't want the sketch. Now what I want to do here is round off this top corner here. It, it has a handy little feature here where it will round it off for you. If we go to curvature, it gives you a little warning. Just click OK. And you see now that the curvature is kind of minimal here. Um, I think we need to reverse it to go outwards. In fact, let's go to apply all edges see what happens there we are that's what we want there so it should be going outwards like that if it's going inwards you need to reverse the surface so green tick that accept it we'll do the, uh, something similar at the back <laughs> but all we want to do we don't want to get a curved dome kind of thing on that there all we want to do is get a surface in there that will match the curvature of the um, of the body that it was meeting so basically using them curves there we just want to fill it with nothing fancy so we're just going to let it fill itself naturally and we don't hit select any other um, options so now that's completely closed off there now it looks like it's solid it's not it's actually um, it's actually hollow in the middle <clears throat> so what we'll do here um, actually I'm going to keep that hidden for a second what we'll do here is some knit surface knitting so knit surface one, two, three, and four, and I'm going to create the solid. Clans. Now I'll bring my thicken back in. What I'm going to do now is combine the two of these together. Don't worry about this here. That's a that's a shadow that's uh, from the floor there. We we won't mess with that now. We'll do something with it later. Uh, so combine. So insert features. Combine, wing to body, add green tick. We will then put a large fillet on the joint between the two of them. 20 millimeter radius, like so. And what I will do then is mirror that over the far side. So mirror using the front plane, I think, yeah. And uh, features to fillet. Now what I'll do is clear that. I'll try to use the bodies and see what happens here. <coughs> now it's all one body, so what I don't want to happen there is to, I think it's going to, let me just accept it and see what happens. So if I hide that body, yeah, you see, let me just come back here for a second. Let's go to the solid bodies folder, see if we're okay here. So we have the center bit. We have this here, which is the wing and all of that uh, main body. And on the other side, we have the same thing there. So let's go back into the mirror there. We kind of done, or I done that incorrectly. So rather than mirroring the body, um, I want, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete that fillet, or sorry, delete that mirror altogether. <coughs> Try that again. Mirror, features to mirror. So the face plane, mirror face plane is going to be the front plane. And it's not letting me do, the, I might have to do, and let me think about this. <coughs> what I could do is, let me think, 
Okay, we'll try it again. Features mirror, front plane, features to mirror. So it's not letting me mirror that there. What I could do is the following. Let's get rid of the combine and the fillet for a second. Sorry, wrong one. Let's get rid of that altogether. The combine, and we'll do the combination afterwards. So I'll do mirror about the front plane. Features to mirror. And it's not letting me do that. Features to mirror. That's, that's a bit unusual. So that's a, it's a surface knit. And it's a solid. <clears throat> I'm just going to check that it's a solid. Yeah, that's a solid there. So why won't it let me, so I'll use mirror, but I'll use a body this time. Front plane, bodies to mirror. Okay, it'll mirror there. And I'm going to do a combine, insert, features, combine. Three bodies, add them. And now I'll do my fillet again, radius 20. And the far side, radius 20. So I have to do that in a bit of a roundabout way. If it works for you, great. If not, um, just try the way I've done it there. I could even, even the actual the spindle thing there. Sorry, I'll go back to the combine for a second. <clears throat> I'm going to add, I'm going to make it all just one body. I'm going to add that into the combine as well. Okay, so we've only one body. Now, next thing we'll do is on the back. We will, we're going to create a vent, but I need some material at the back to create the vent. So I will create a sketch plane at the back using this circle here as my reference. I don't need to select anything else. I look normal to that plane. I'm going to sketch. Now I want to convert entities, but unfortunately convert entities requires you to select a line or a circle or some entity first. Convert entities. That one there. And my sketch. And I am going to extrude that <coughs> extrude that circle three millimeters inwards and I will merge the result okay, I will hide that plane I don't need the plane anymore I have a surface to work with you can see now it's closed off now I'm just looking at my vent, the sketch for my vent. Just bear with me a second. Okay, I'm going to use that as my sketch <coughs> plane. Um, that is my sketch plane. Hold on a second. So I'm going to draw a series of concentric circles. Um, let's take it up to the vent there. Yeah, I'm going to do a series of concentric circles. So they all share the same center point. And my first one is going to be diameter 35. So sketch on that surface there. Let me just try that again. Diameter 35. And I'm going to offset the first one. <coughs> six set, uh, millimeters so offset entities I'm going to reverse the direction and I'm going to do two more offsets now both of them are going to be five millimeters from the last reverse direction and one more offset entities it's going to be quite a small one there we are I'm also going to draw these vertical lines that are going to be called ribs when we do the, the vent and do them from the horizontal quadrant to the right quadrant. Okay, so everything's defined there. So I think that's good to go. Now the vent feature can be quite temperamental. So it's an insert. Instead of features, it's fastening feature. Vent. Now the boundary is the outer one. <clears throat> that's good. It's a good sign that it's doing that so far. The ribs are the verticals. Okay, it's working for me, which is great. And the, the depth of a rib, the thickness of it is going to be 3, and the width of it is going to be 1. 
Now the spars are the next two circles. And they're going to have a 3 and a 1 as well. Depth and thickness. And my fill boundary is the last little circle that we just want to fill with a solid material all the way through. And the depth is going to be 3. <coughs> Green tick. And that's my vent done. Okay, much better than having to carve that out with loads of extrudes, uh, extrude cuts. Okay, nearly there. The next thing I'll do is insert the plane. Um, now before I do that, actually, I'm going to draw on the front plane. <coughs> I need a reference line because the new plane that I'm going to send up, set up is going to be underneath here, looking in at an angle. So I'm going to draw it myself. It's just the center line there as a reference. I don't know if that's completely horizontal. Okay, it's over defined. Let me just delete that there. So I've done something wrong. Let me just try that again. Center line, the origin. Um, I'm not 100% sure that 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 line is. Not, is it horizontal? It is horizontal. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, <clears throat> from the center of that center line, look there. I'm going to draw a line out. To, I want it to touch uh, the edge here. Now it could do a convert entity. Sometimes it doesn't pick up the edge here, okay? But I have a coincident all the way along that curve, and I'm going to set up a 20 degree, sorry, 70 degree angle, and end my sketch. And I'm going to use that 70 degree angle to create a plane perpendicular to it. So plane, select the line, and we're going to select the end point as my second reference. Okay, there's my new plane. And on that plane, which I'll look normal to, I'm going to sketch a circle from the origin. And it's going to be diameter, I think it's 10. You can always go back and change it if it's not. Okay, I'm just going to check with my, and I'm going to extrude it as well. So yes, that is diameter 10. So, end my sketch. <coughs> now it doesn't, it's not on the bottom. There's a little bit of a gap in there. So what I want to do is make it meet the curved surface. So extrude boss base. It's going to be a bi-directional extrude boss base. The first one is going to go up to a body. That's my body there. I'm going to merge the results, but I'm going to open up direction 2, and I'm going to go 10 millimeters below. Okay, so 10 millimeters below, up the body, merge result, green tick. So this is like a shaft that's going to fit in a socket that will secure it to a base. I'm going to hide that plane. I don't need it anymore. I'm going to hide that sketch. I don't need it anymore. Right. Next thing. <coughs> and it's, it's pretty much done now, but what I'm going to do is use a split line. Um, if we look at the diagram here, you'll see that there's this blue kind of rim here. That I'm able to color independently of the rest of it. I'm going to create that. So on the front plane, sorry, right plane, sketch, circle, <coughs> the origin, and I'm just going to make it slightly bigger there. And I'm going to put a smart dimension on it. I'm going to make it 110. Diameter 110. Green tick. And I'm going to use that as a split line. And I'm going to, it's going to be a projection. I'm going to be projecting it onto that face there. Like so. Now it doesn't look like it's done much. But you can see here. I've now split that surface up into two surfaces. So I can uh, paint that if you like independently. I'm going to add a couple of fillets on here. A very small fillet onto all of this face here. Let's see. Yeah. And I'm going to do the back face as well, if I can see it, from the back. Yeah, one millimeter. So you can see it's doing the, the joint in there as well. And I might just do these little lines in here. Do everything one millimeter radius. Just to keep it all within the one. For handiness sake, all within the one. Um, fillet command. And one more. Now it's very hard to see. Oh, there it is. 
and by right I probably shouldn't be doing the face there actually because <clears throat> I don't want to do the, the hole so I'll just select that there I'm going to delete that face there delete and hopefully I can see what I need to see here at the back so there there I could always hide apart if I wanted to and there and I suppose I want these as well grounds that's one two and three okay and I might just add this in here as well one millimeter now it won't let me do that there so I'm going to just remove them too ah oh, they're clearing everything anyway sorry about that you can fast forward if you want let me try all this again what I done there was I cleared the whole selection rather than just the two that I'd selected a bit of a tedious process but has to be done fillets are very important to make things look uh, well aesthetically pleasing they take the, the sharpness off things I would advise you to fillet the hell out of everything fillets usually come at the end <clears throat> we're pretty much done with this part now I'm just going to put materials on it after this but um, should always put the fillets at the end when all the hard work is done you're left with the tedious work so I would much rather the tedious work than the hard work now I think I got everything okay I'll just assume that I have okay all right there's all my fillets on there looks great now the last thing I'll do is put materials um, on this here now just drag that over from my other window appearances we'll go with red plastic high gloss and drag it to the, the whole part and I'll go with blue gloss plastic and I'm going to drag it just onto this face here now I don't want it to go to the body or the split line I want it to go onto the face okay <clears throat> so that is that part done so I'll go file save as <coughs> I'm going to save it on my desktop but I'm going to create a folder because we're going to have three parts for this thing so new folder I will call it uh, desk fan enter into desk fan and I will just call this uh, fan body save Okay, so that's the first part completed okay the next thing I'll do is I'll, I'll set up the fan so I'm just going to close this part now for now and I'm going to start a new part uh, <clears throat> okay so I'm going to start it's going to be revolved it's a simple enough piece to do the actual blade of the fan is going to be done with a, a flex uh, we're going to be twisting it with a flex um, so I'm going to start a sketch on the front plane. <coughs> I'm going to start off with a center line. And do I no? I'm going to actually start off with a full line here, like so. And I'm going to draw the following profile. Let me think about this. I'll come down here, across here. Extend this. What I want now is a kind of a, a quarter circle. Um, so maybe, mm, let me see. So from here with the line. Okay, so I'll just show you that again. I'm going to draw a quarter circle. <clears throat> we can do it using the line command. So here's where I'm starting. I want to go to here. So I'm moving my mouse back. I haven't clicked anything. And then move it out again. And I want the center point to be. Um, just put it there for the moment but I want it to be on that line like so 
and I want to make them meet up like so. Okay, so I've enclosed a uh, profile there. That's going to be 22. 1.5. Um, oh, I forgot there's a little flat part. Um, <coughs> let me just work on this here. I get rid of that dimension. There's meant to be a little flat part here, actually. Like so. And I'm going to trim off the bit I don't need. Grant. Okay, now this part here is going to be 2. We'll bring this back to 22. This has to be radius 10. And that is it. It's fully defined. And my sketch. <coughs> Go to isometric. And I will do a revolve. The revolve I'm going to do is that there. And it's automatically picking up the... Let me just delete that there for a second. There we are. That's what we want. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is set up a plane. And the plane I'm going to set up, I'm just going back to my drawing here. It's going to be based on the front plane and it's going to be 45 millimeters from the front plane. Okay, so front plane, <coughs> reference geometry plane, 45 millimeters from it. Green tick. And I'm going to set a second plane up. <coughs> and the second plane is, let me think about this. It's going to be, no, I think I missed the sketch here that I have to put in. Yeah, okay. So there's a sketch that I have to put in here. Two sketches, in fact. One is going to be on front plane <coughs> look normal to it and I'm just kind of using my other drawing here to get the dimensions okay now I'm ready <coughs> you're going to put a center line sorry my other sketch is open there Center line, front plane, the origin there. I'm going to go with center rectangle. Center rectangle is going to be centered on that line. It has to have a height of 8 and a thickness of 1. And it is going to be, if I go back to my four millimeters from something I just need to take a backtrack here just bear with me a sec it's going to be four millimeters oh yeah that's it <coughs> four millimeters from here try that again there we are it's fully defined now I'm going to do and I've done it on the wrong <coughs> the wrong plane. Now, I didn't mean to do that, but I can show you a handy thing here. If you draw something on the wrong plane, a sketch, we can edit it and go edit sketch plane. So I want the real sketch plane to be the front plane. Very handy little trick there. Okay, there we are. On plane one, I will be sketching a similar rectangle. <coughs> on plane one, center rectangle. Uh, I'm going to line the center up with the other center and I'm going to lock it into the uh, the outline of the other one and I'm going to make it three millimeters that's all I need could have put in a center line I don't really need it to be honest <coughs> okay So what I want now is a another plane. I need to draw a profile that's perpendicular to those two profiles there. Basically both of the planes that they're on, I need to draw a plane that's perpendicular to both of them because I need to draw the outline of the um, 
of the of the blade. So I'm going to insert a new plane, <coughs> and I'm going to use the front plane as my reference. No, the right plane is the reference, and the center of this rectangle as my second reference plane. Like so. I'm going to look perpendicular to it. <coughs> now, once again, I need to get my sketch from the other drawing that I have beside me, because I don't have the handout. And I'm going to draw <coughs> the center line. Hold on, just bear with me again. Okay, so sketch center line on that plane the origin over to here it's horizontal and I'm going to use a spline and I'm purposely it's a two-point spline and I'm purposely not going to lock it on just yet I want to mess with that spline handle like so and this one as well like so and this one I want to make vertical <coughs> And I also want to snap it, sorry, not snap it, I want to pierce it onto this sketch here. This is going to be a guide curve, basically, so pierce. And it's gone off, like so, okay. <coughs> um, what else do I need to do? I need to put few things on this so I need to put a 32 millimeter sorry 32 dimension on that there <coughs> and let's see what else do I need to do oh yeah I need to pierce this onto that sketch so highlighted control select okay and I need to put a 70 millimeter dimension on this spline handle And I need to put in an angular, an angular measurement on that spline handle. So I'm putting in a little center line there. So between here and here, it has to be um, 70 degrees, which doesn't look right. Let me try that again. Let me delete that. I think I put the wrong dimension in. I didn't even need that center line. I'm thinking of a different drawing that I've done. So between there and there, that has to be. Sorry, it's 32 degrees. Let me see. Hold on now. I just have to. 28 degrees, actually. I beg your pardon. Now that's fully defined. It's pierced on. That's vertical. Did I make that vertical? That's spline handle. Okay, and I'll mirror that. Sorry, sketch features. Mirror it about that center line. Grant. That's that there. End my sketch. Hide them planes. <coughs> and I'm going to do a loft, surface loft. The reason I'm using the surface loft, loft is because I have guide curves. And I'm going to loft from the left hand side of that one to the left hand side of that one so it doesn't twist. Looks like it's going to twist it. It's not because I haven't put in my guide curve yet. Select that one there. It's an open loop one. So accept it. And then this one. Also an open loop one. That's grand. Um, and if I just confer with my other drawing. I don't think there's any. No, there's no other settings I need than that. So I'll just accept that. Okay. <coughs> now the next thing I'm going to do is put a bit of a. Um, a flex onto it. That's that means a twist. So insert features, and we're going to go flex. And the thing I want to flex is that. And <coughs> what I want to do is move this trim plane back this way. So that's trim plane number one. So trim plane number one. I'm going to set that to twenty. In fact, I'm going to set it to about ten. So the twist will only happen between the red and the green plane. And the twist that I want. Is going to be 25 degrees. Okay, so nothing too, too metal. Okay, let's have a look and see what that looks like. Yeah, that's probably enough there. 
and what I want to do then is a fillet and the fillet I'm going to put on the edge let's see now I'm just going to go in and edit the fillet here the radius well, it's one millimeter thick I think let's just see now features fillet I'm going to put a very very slight fillet on the top of this here sorry it's messing with my other drawing fillet I'm going to go 0 0.5 see what happens here so probably won't take 0 0.5, let's go 0 0.25 and it won't fill it that there it's unusual let me try the top edge instead rather than the face 0 0.25 nope, it's not taking a fillet, ok, so we'll leave the fillet out <coughs> um, in the flex, let me see, could I have no, I couldn't do anything different there. In the surface loft, could I come? Could, is there a merge result option? Merge tangent faces, faces and close loft. No. I'm going to do a combine here. Features. Uh, da, 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 da. Combine is not coming up for some reason. So solid bodies. I have one revolve. <coughs> Um ah uh, sure this is a this is a surface loft. I just realized that shouldn't have been a surface loft. Ah, right, yeah, big mistake here. That should have been a lofted boss base, a solid loft. So let's try that again. And that's why my fillet wouldn't work either. Okay, so this is a closed loop profile. To another closed loop profile, and then we want our guide curves, which are open loop and the other one open loop green tick now I have the option here I can actually merge the result so it will um, fasten itself to it so I think I think it will work if I just do it this way maybe not we'll see um, put it see if I can do that fill it again now 0 0.25 uh, we can even go 0 0.5 I'd reckon Okay, we just go with 0 0.25, but not the face. I'm just going to do the, the edges here and the bottom edge. So I'm going to put a different fillet on the basically the joint. <coughs> so fillet, we go two. See how that looks. Yeah, that'll do. And I can do a circular pattern now features circular pattern now I need a I need an axis again so I'm going to set my axis up like earlier um, reference geometry axis select some part of this here that's all I need there just that little bit circular pattern select that might have to select the fillet as well yeah and the axis I want to use is in here somewhere there we are, and we want three 360 degrees. Um, any merge result there? No, but I'm sure it'll merge. Okay, so that's all one body now that I have. That's it pretty much done. Might put a small fillet on the underside here of 0 0.5 mil. Okay, and I'm going to give that a... Actually, did I... the circular pattern I don't think the other fillet went with it as well so back in here maybe it did no it didn't there we go so that's the two fillets that's the whole thing I'm gonna give it a material let's go with um, maybe stainless steel metal steel um, do, 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 which one steel Polished steel. I'm going to go with brushed steel, something pale. Sorry, not shiny. I mean, for the, and we want to do it to the whole part. I'm going to turn my axis off in here. And I'll go to an isometric view. And I will save that as propeller. In the same folder, desktop fan, propeller. 
save. Okay, start a new part, our last part. And we're going to go to the top plane this time. Sketch an ellipse. Uh, make sure it's the right way around. Um, ellipse, I think the center is. Yeah. Center is here. And it's going to be 120 wide. by 60 high and to make it fully defined I need to make sure that these two points are the two vertical ones and um, we need to add that relationship I done horizontal there grand finish that uh, I will probably set up a new plane so I think the new plane I think is 30 millimeters above yeah it is yeah so based on the top plane reference Geometry, 30 millimeters, grand on that plane. Sketch another ellipse, center point like so, and it is 60 wide, I think, and 40 high. And I'm going to lock the two vertical, two points there to be vertical. Okay, and I'm going to do a straightforward loft between the two of them, hide that plane. Um, not a surface loft, but a, um, a lofted ball space, solid. So I want a closed loop profile to a closed loop profile. Like so. And I'm just going to try that again. I don't think that makes a difference. Hmm. I'm going to try something here. Features, lofted boss base. I'm going to choose that that point there to that. I'll just delete that for a second. That point there to that point there. Try that again. Oh yeah, I can't choose a point. It has to be the actual curve. Profile one, profile two, like so. Okay, no guide curves. Just a straightforward loft. <clears throat> now, I'm going to put a hole at the top and I'm going to cut it out, diameter 10, a hole on that surface and it's going to go down a distance of 20. Okay, so, select that surface, sketch, normal 2, that is diameter, sorry, diameter 10. And the sketch features extrude cut. The screen's gone a bit weird there, but don't worry about that. Cut down 20 millimeters. Okay. Now, the next part. I'm going to create a plane based on plane one there. I'm going to bring it down 10 millimeters. That's the first thing. Uh, flip the offset. Okay. The last thing I want to do to this really is to, I need to kind of get this base to mold to the underside of the curved surface of the fan body. So what we'll be doing here is we'll bring in the fan body. We're not doing an assembly, but we're going to bring in the fan body and we're going to use it as a kind of a cutting tool to chop away a bit here. That will uh, chop it in such a way that the, the top surface that's left will match the curved surface um, for an assembly later. Um, bear in mind that we'll also have a, a shaft going into that socket there as well. So what I want to do is go insert, um, not features, but I want to insert a part. The part I want to bring in is in that folder, fan body. And you'll see it when, I, when it comes in, make sure planes is ticked. Now, if I go to a front view here, look at it, it's, it's not at the right angle. The hole or the shaft that... Sorry, the socket that the shaft has to go into is vertical. This is not vertical. So we need to kind of realign it. Kind of like, um, it's kind of like doing mates in an assembly, but it's not an assembly. So we use a feature called move copy. We've used it before. So insert features, move copy. The object that's going to move is that. And I'm going to add three mates here. The first mate I'm going to add is 
the, that shaft there and that shaft there and they're going to be concentric and I'm going to go add. The next uh, mate that I'm going to add is this plane here which is the plane that was on the underneath part which created that shaft initially. I want that to be coincident with this flat shaft. I'm going to level the thing out and we want to make it uh, coincident. Add. The last thing and I don't know if I necessarily need it, I want to get the two front planes of the object. So that front plane with the front plane of the fan body so I can open this up here and this is why I ticked planes earlier when I was bringing it in because I want the plane the front plane like so and it didn't really move because it was just it already lined itself up but just to be sure we add that there so I have three um, three mates down here okay now there's a load of planes there we're not keeping this top part we're going to use that top part to chop away part of um, the bottom part so if we look at the hidden detail and um, we go to a front view there you can see that there's a bit of an overlap between them so I want the outside of this uh, surface here to cut that um, <clears throat> so I'm going to do it the way the book does it uh, and then I'm going to try it another way to see if it works or not probably won't though um, but what I'm going to use is the combine feature to do it so insert features combine I've done intersect there I don't want to do that insert features combine and we're going to do a subtraction we're going to subtract one from the other which is kind of like split I guess so the main body is going to be the base and the body that I'm going to combine or subtract is this here okay and I'm going to go green tick and I'm going to get a little box here and I need to go to selected bodies we need to be selective here so we've two bodies we've the bottom one and the top one we want to just keep we want the bottom one to stay the blue one at the bottom you can see the yellow part at the top and click OK so what I have now is instead of a horizontal top I actually have a curved bottom let me just go to the hidden detail you can see it's curving under there and it's got the shaft there still okay now all them planes we can turn them all off it's kind of tedious I'm not sure if there's a way of doing it well I suppose we can just click them all I'm holding control at the moment I wonder if I can do that there yet. Yeah. Right click, turn all the planes off, back to an isometric view, back to a solid view, and I'm going to give this a blue plastic, um, blue plastic high gloss finish, like so. Grand, get rid of that there for now, don't need that. Um, I'm going to name that file save as I'll just call it fan base save fan base is already there I don't understand why it's doing that we we'll just call it base then save okay so that's the the base done so I have the three parts um I wonder would it work so if I just go back here quickly so we're cropping up in an hour here I just have the assembly to do if I was to try to do a split here, I wonder would it work. So insert features split. And we're using the outside, the trim tool will be this outside surface. And we're going to the selected body will be that one there. Let's see if this works here. No, it doesn't. Why doesn't that work now? I wonder why that doesn't work. It's unusual. Maybe my face needs to be that one there as well. Um, okay, it seems to work. I don't know why the book is doing it the other way. Um, so I want this one here, or I could take that one there and go consume cut bodies and make this disappear now. You get the same thing. So I'm not 100% sure. We well, can do either one then, so it's up to yourself, really. Um, I'll just delete that split there so we don't actually need it. So, so the split works and the combined feature works to subtract one body from another to get this curved surface. Okay, so I'll just save that. Okay, so we'll just do a quick assembly now. Um, so we go file new. And I will go to assembly and I'm going to bring in the base first. It should be handy enough to do. So 
Oh, did I go to a new part there? No, I didn't. Insert component. And I'm going to bring in the fan base. That's to predict what I wanted. Um, just give it a sec there. My computer's just slowing down. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's the last thing I want now is for this to crash. So sorry about that, my computer actually crashed there and I had to restart SolidWorks. So I'm in the assembly, I'm going to go browse and I'm going to search my folder on my desktop, which was called um, desktop fan or desk fan. And I'm going to go with the base first, open. Okay, and I'm going to put that in like so. And I'm going to insert another part. I'm going to bring in the body. Like so, and you can see that the the hole is ver the shaft socket is vertical. That's not vertical. That's at a seventy degree angle or whatever. But that's no problem because we can mate it. So the mate that I'll do first will be uh, concentric, like so. So you can see now. So I can it's kept in line, but I can rotate it around, which I don't want to do. So what I'll do here is go to hidden detail visible. And I'll take the bottom surface there and match it with the bottom surface coincidentally there. Green tick. Yeah, that's fine, but I can still rotate that there like so. So what I want to do is match up like I did with the other, uh, the other thing previously, front plane with the front plane. So mate. So I'm going to go front plane from the main object. Uh, sorry, no, front plane from the base. Base, base, base. Sorry, front plane. And the fan body, I'm going to go front plane as well. Fan body, front plane. And it rotates it around. Coincidental, green tick. That's fine. So I'm going to look at the hidden detail there. And we get a perfect match there at the bottom. Lastly, I'm going to put in the propeller. So insert components, browse propeller. Like so, um, do a mate, and so we want to do the uh, concentric mate there. Concentric command. And what way do we want to do this here? So I'm going to do the back face of that there, with that face there. Coincid uh, coincident. Green tick. Now that's free to rotate, and I don't see why you need to. Well, you might need to fasten that into position. Now that little shaft st should be sticking out the back there. That's fine. I wouldn't worry about that there. But, but that's pretty much it. I think that's a nice little feature. If you have rotating parts, leave it loose in its shaft so that it can rotate. And you can mess around with it. Okay, so that's that there. So I'm going to save this file. Save as in the same folder. Rebuild the document. That's fine. <coughs> Desktop fan. I'll call it desk top fan assembly save it's done now i can see the ground the, the, there's a bit of a gap between the shadow there so if i go in here and mess around with the scenes i think so floor reflection floor shadow um doesn't seem to want to get rid of it there for some reason floor shadow floor reflection what I'll do is I'll put a scene on it, a basic scene. Um, the one I always like to use is the, um, I think it's the office one, office space. All right, so um, I think we can realign. If I just try to mess around with this here, edit scene. We can realign the uh, aligned floor with selected plane and I'm going to select that as my plane and it still hasn't done it there I'm not 100% sure why it's not something I mess around with or have to mess around with too often um, Quite unusual, actually. I'm not sure why why it's like that. Uh, offset geometry. 
Hmm. It's very, very unusual why that's there. Anyway, if I was to go do now, let's see if we can do some sort of render with it. SolidWorks add-ins, you can't do this at home by the way, but <clears throat> see what happens here. SolidWorks add-ins, we go Photo View 360 and then Render Tools should pop open. And I'm going to do a preview window, I'm going to zoom in a bit there. Turn on perspective as always. And this always takes a couple of seconds to, to come on. Just looking at that there, I should have probably put the blue on the, the rim of that there. Um, I can I can always go back and change it in the main part, and then it will update itself. I think you can even change it in this here, and it'll update it in part. It works both ways. I'll see if I can do it now. I just want to let this thing load the um, photo view 360. It takes a while. I'm afraid to click anything in case it crashes, so I definitely don't want to click anything at the moment. The way the screen's after going there. <clears throat> so it's loading up on my second screen here. I'm not going to touch it just yet uh, because it will crash, no doubt. Okay, it's ready. There it is. There. I think the shadow is fine there actually in this one. I'm going to adjust the angle of it so we can see the vent as well, like so. And it adjusts itself. Office space, floor reflection. I'm going to put that back on. Um, going to edit that floor reflection for shadow that's grand let me just zoom that in there let's see what it looks like here yeah that doesn't look bad at all so the shadow's not really coming out there but I'm not going to pay too much attention to that now that's fine I would do a render there just to show you how to get that rim to be fully blue again. Um, if we go to part, I think if we go to the yeah, so blue high gloss plastic edit appearance. Wonder can I add that in there? Yeah, there we are. Simple as that. Green tick. Now that's going to update. We want that to update in the previous one. So if I save that, it's going to throw up uh, a message here. Um, does it, you want to save it in the fan body file? Uh, yes, we do. So that's that done. I'm not going to do the render. Um, so if I go to my fan body, which I'm opening up on my second screen, fan body, you will see that it's after updating that there. So it works both ways. If I update something in this, it will update it in the assembly as long as they're all kept in the same folder. Simple as that. Okay, so that's the end of that video. Um, I want you to try that yourself. Um, and send me the files, the three main files, um, and the assembly. Thanks.